Hello guys, how you doing? Welcome, I'm Sim UK. This is Regiments from Bird's Eye Games, due out on the 16th of August 2022, backed by publishers Micropose. So I'm expecting good things uh, from this game. I've already played the early, early demo version. This is the full release, and uh, I will be playing hopefully quite a bit of this game. As always, I play with it. I play games and show you them completely unedited so you can see exactly what you're going to get for your money. Whether it be good, bad, or anything in between, you'll know exactly what's on offer. In this particular video, I'm just going to go through the tutorials. I played the original tutorials, but uh, this is a further on part of the game. There could be new stuff, new equipment, new techniques, new tutorial in its entirety. Plus, I haven't played since the very first demo came out, so uh, I need a bit of a refresher. Let's jump in. Basic training. New objective received. Okay, so we're going to learn the key camera and unit controls. First, let's learn how to co how to control the camera. Use W S A D to move. Uh, rotate the camera by holding middle mouse button or holding control. Change the height of the camera by scrolling. Okay. A platoon has been deployed. You will use multiple platoons to achieve your objectives in missions, but for now, let's try controlling a single one. Click on the platoon icon with the left mouse button to select it. Also notice the central panel. When a single platoon is selected, it will display information regarding the status condition of status and condition of the selected platoon. It tells you what it is, how many vehicles there are, durability, suppression, main ammo, uh, accuracy, defense, speed, morale. You can order the platoon to move by clicking on the desired position with the right mouse button. Does that flatten the grass? It does, doesn't it? That's pretty cool. So, I mean, if you played this game enough and you were sort of switched on enough, you could roll up to a field and go... Their tank tracks and then you'd have some idea where the enemy tanks have just been i just think that's a cool little feature uh it's critical to master additional movement commands to issue them you can use keyboard hotkeys or the buttons or come up on the command panel which is highlighted now that's this i guess you could use the fast move command in this mode platoon will try to avoid difficult terrain that will slow it down you can use the v command to rotate the platoon Units will automatically try to face the most dangerous target. The rotate command allows you to direct the unit's rotation, which can be useful in certain complex situations. Now rotate the platoon towards the target. I've got to say, something else I quite like is they're all sort of scanning the terrain at different times. You don't see that very often in RTS games. Normally, like a... a, a a unit will just do one thing. Yeah, there's very much a depression, very much a depression in the grass. It's a shame they don't leave tank tracks. That would be even better still. But I gotta say, I do like the detail on these tanks. Look at that. Really looks good. Really impressed. Um, okay. Rotate here. Okay, you want me to rotate there, I see. You can use the reverse command to move the unit back. Ah, so... To move a unit, you right-click, but when you're using a hotkey, it's the left-click. OK, 
Okay. Quirky little things to uh, to deal with. I tell you what, they they're responsive, all right. A new platoon has arrived. You can select several units by pressing the left mouse button and dragging the selection box over them all. Alternatively, you can hold shift and click on the platoon's icon. Uh, of the platoons you want to remove from the current selection. Okay. Unselect both platoons. Unselect. You can hold right mouse button and drag to define where the platoon should face after arriving at the designated position. By dragging the line further, you can also define the spacing between the platoons. You can also hold shift to issue several orders in sequence. So, let's say, go there, go there, face that way. Pretty cool. Again, let's take a look at the detail on these units. Cool, they're fast. And again, they are definitely leaving tank tracks. Well, depressions in the ground. Oh, look, they just squashed that as well. Pretty awesome. Oh, man. That's just taken me back a few years. Uh, when I was a kid, I had uh, a bunch of action man. Uh, I had one action man with movable eyes. And um, he had an APV, whatever this is called, that looks exactly like that. It's really high detail. Can't get in any closer than that, but I think you can see the textures are really high. It's really good. Uh, yes, you can uh, hold the right mouse button and drag to define where they should face and hold shift to issue. Okay. <clears throat> so, I selected them. Ah, uh, I see, I see, I see. An ambush. Your platoons are desperately outgunned and won't be able to deal with the threat. Use retreat command or quickly press Q twice to order your units to retreat. They will use smoke grenades for cover, if available, and reverse to the starting zone as fast as possible. Nice. They reverse out of trouble as well. I was wondering if they go would go forwards or what they would do. Wow. I like how the screen shakes as well. When uh, shots come in, it, it really makes you feel like you're in the uh, in the fight. Kick our ass a bit there. The retreat command is an excellent way to preserve your units. Surviving platoons will retain their experience level and become available for redeployment much faster than the wiped out ones. The reinforcements have arrived. It's up to you to call them in. The regimental panel is highlighted. It shows all the platoons you have available, along with their price and deployment points. Deployment points will be explained in the next tutorials. For now, you have enough to call in all your platoons. Okay, the reinforcements have arrived. It's up to you to call them in. The regimental panel is highlighted. It shows all the platoons you have available along with their price and deployment points. Deployment points will be explained in the next tutorials. Okay. Sorry, I just had to go put my aircon on. Hopefully you can't hear it in the background. All right. Click on the platoon icon with the left mouse button to select it. Then click on the map to call in the platoon. Units will appear at the closest starting zone and advance to the designated point. You can select several platoons at once to deploy. Oh, some leopards. Some Marder A1. Infantry fighting vehicles. They look so good, don't they? How many can I have? So, that's where they're going to deploy from, I think. 
Where should we send them? Let's just send them there, I guess. If you attack with your entire force at once, it should be enough to neutralize enemy forces with minimal losses. Your platoons will automatically attack any enemy units in range, though some units may need to be stationary to fire. You can also issue an attack order by a right mouse button clicking on a specific target. Your units will prioritize it and automatically approach to use their weapons. You can use attack, E key, command on a suspected position. Your units will advance there, automatically stopping to engage the encountered enemy. Advance and destroy two enemy platoons. Typical. The enemy platoons are... Uh, Actually, do you know what? Let's try doing it that way. So let's get up close. Those tanks look fantastic. Those uh, APV units look equally awesome and where are the other guys here they are look at look at the details on them so i've issued a three key command a three step command hopefully utilizing the uh the tree lines as cover and we've discovered our first enemy units we can't actually see them but we can kind of see them Yeah, we're making good, good progress. And we got really close before they saw us, which is nice. Do love how the camera shakes like that. That's really cool. See what it looks like from their perspective. Oh, that rocket. Whoosh. That's awesome. Oh, I love the way that zigzags in. That really looks incredibly cool. Wow! I am so impressed with that. Oh, is that it? Have we taken the... Uh... Excellent, you've defeated an enemy ambush. This rounds up the basic training. I've got to say, that was absolutely awesome absolutely awesome it's going to take a bit of practice to be quick enough on the e binds to be effective but um i'm hoping there's a massive campaign in here let's just have a quick look at the operations okay so no operations at the moment regipedia operations let's have a quick look here Operations can be hard and grueling affairs. To persist on the face of losses, to, f to defeat the enemy and to attain victory, one has to know the key operational mechanics well. Key terms. In operations, you are commanding a single combat formation, be it regiment, brigade or battalion. Operations are split into a number of phases, each representing several hours of real time. Larger operations happen over several stages, each representing a set of objectives in a given geographical area. Smaller operations usually happen on a single map. Operations are persistent and use a save slot system. Each slot can have a single active operation. When the operation is concluded, you can review the final stats, rerun it from any phase, save or clear it and start a new operation. Each phase is saved separately, allowing you to backtrack and replay the operation from any given point. Caution. This will overwrite phases beyond the one that you're playing. That makes sense. Okay, so... Harrier! Oh, yes! Oh, gosh! I love this aeroplane so, so much. Has a real... 
It's been a part of my life, my whole life, I think. Okay, game mechanics, retreating, refitting, experience, objective zones, mobility, obstacles, right. This is all stuff I'll read and then I'll update you at a later date. But let's jump into tutorial number two. Advanced training will guide you through the commands and abilities related to core unit types. New objective received. Welcome to the advanced training. Here we'll examine the mechanics of key unit types in a series of combat exercises. Modern warfare is defined by combining arms combat operations conducted by a mixed team of various combat and support units. Thus, understanding the strengths and vulnerabilities of each unit type is vital. This is see that's one of the key things that I need to learn. That will take time. Tanks and mechanised infantry from the backbone of most combat groups. Armour platoons are composed of tanks, modern main battle tanks, MBTs, are one of the strongest units available. The heavy frontal armour is nearly impervious to any small calibre rounds and can shrug off hits from heavy weapons. They also have great medium range firepower and can effectively use their weapons on the move. It's important to note that older tanks and MBTs that expose their vulnerable side, their vulnerable side armour, are still very vulnerable to weapons, even outdated ones. Mechanized platoons comprise the second half of your of your core force. This type represents personnel carriers with their infantry squads combined into a single platoon. Their main strength is their flexibility in the infantry they carry. On the other hand, most personnel carriers don't have strong armor and are vulnerable when caught out of cover. If left idle and out of combat for enough time, mechanised infantry will entrench on their own. Well, that's interesting. Okay. You can use the change mode, X key, command, to change the infantry stance of your mechanised platoons. Infantry can move mounted inside the transport or dismounted. Alternatively, you can issue orders whilst holding ALT. The platoons will automatically change their mode upon arriving at the designated point. Use this to secure the designated area with infantry. Use X to dismount the infantry at the designated point. Okay, let's try this then. So we have... Is this the tank unit? No, that's the right unit. So, say X. says use X to dismount at the designated point. Got it. Pushing out. Yeah, I'm not sure that worked. Maybe I need to drive there first. Oh look, they've dismounted already. Okay, well that's not what we meant to do at all, is it? There you go, they're getting back in. Now that's interesting, they're getting back in the vehicles before the vehicles have even stopped. I'm not sure that's particularly realistic. Maybe that's something that needs to change. So they're moving faster now, which is good. Crushed the car. Went straight through the building. Okay. Mounted movement is quicker over the open ground, but infantry can't use their weapons from inside the transport. This mounted movement is slower, but allows them to use the entire platoon's arsenal. With the dismounted infantry providing more situational awareness, infantry transports can be better utilised cover and become harder to hit. Your next objective is to take the designated farm. A group of modern T-80 tanks is occupying it, making a direct attack with your forces risky. Flanking, attacking from the sides or rear, is always a superior choice. If the circumstances allow it, vehicles are universally less armoured on the sides and suffer more damage. They are much easier to hit, too. Cover the entrenchments... Cover and entrenchments are far less effective against fire coming from the sides. 
Use the tree lines on either side of the objective to approach the farm. Dismount the infantry at close range so that they can use their light anti-tank weapons against the tank's side armour. Roger that. Okay, so what units do we have here? We have some tanks and a bunch of APVs. So I'm going to have these guys come down here. Spread, spread themselves up to here. Is that outside the operational combat arena. Okay. So they're off. Now, I don't think I should take the tanks straight down the middle, but I kind of want to distract the enemy from my units that are moving around the sides, if that makes sense. So I'm going to do completely the opposite of what the tutorial tells me, because my tanks should have stronger frontal protection, enough to uh, protect themselves, I guess. Here we go, fight on. I'm not sure why they're not attacking. I'm not sure why they're not attacking. Quite sure what's going on there, if I'm being honest. So my takes are almost... Actually, they're surviving. So these guys are finally engaging. That's weird. I don't know what they just literally wouldn't move. They stopped. And I had to recreate completely new tactics. That's interesting. I'm not entirely sure what happened there. But anyway, I think we did it without losing a single unit. Let's just check our tanks. Oh, what the hell are the tanks? Did I lose all my tanks? I think everything has disappeared. Excellent. Flank attacks are always more effective than frontal ones, even against lightly armoured units. Mobility obstacles are a common sight on the battlefield, especially when one side had time to prepare defences properly. Units cannot pass through enemy obstacles until they are breached. All land units can breach obstacles. Dismounted mechanised infantry can do it faster, but the engineers are the most effective. Combat engineers and engineering vehicles are specialised variants of infantry and tanks. They can clear the obstacles faster than any other type of unit. In addition, engineers are often armed with weapons that are especially effective against entrenched units. Breaching an obstacle is done automatically as long as the unit is in contact with the obstacle. Keep in mind that units are especially vulnerable whilst they're clearing an obstacle. 
Consider using smoke and suppressing fire on the enemy. Now use the engineers to breach the designated obstacles. So I'm guessing it's it's these, right? Is that correct? So just by being in contact with them. So that is how that's happening. So let's send them both onto this one at the same time. And see who can uh, reach it first. But the tanks got there first. No idea. Reconnaissance platoons excel at finding the enemy and observing their movement. They have higher speed and improved spotting equipment compared to the regular units. They're much more adept at using cover to remain unseen too. Most reconnaissance vehicles are lightly armoured and armed and are not fit for direct combat. It can be useful to restrict recon platoons to return fire by chance fire mode so they won't give away their position. Switch off the weapons on the recon platoon and advance to the designated area. So, a little triangle pops up there. Do you see that? So we've got hold fire. I can't see any other confirmation unless the unit itself has something. What's the key? Yeah, so a little red X comes up on them. That's look really good. Artillery provides long-range fire support. It outranges other weapon systems and can shoot over obstacles. It takes time to aim their guns. Due to low accuracy and lack of armor-piercing abilities, it's mostly useful for suppressing targets rather than outright destroying them. Suppressed targets have reduced accuracy and rate of fire. Artillery requires a manual artillery attack. T, excuse me, T order to engage targets. Use recon platoon to find the enemy around the designated area and order your artillery to suppress the target from afar. Find and suppress the enemy platoon. Right, so I can see them. So now I want to suppress them. Good one. Excellent. Let's proceed to the next exercise. Platoons have a limited amount of ammo available. Intense combat will consume it rapidly. When the main ammo pool is depleted, the platoon won't be able to use primary weapons. Keeping the unit supplied is thus extremely important. Here you can see a Lars II platoon. It's an MLRS rapid fire rocket artillery that consumes ammo in very high volumes. Currently it's out of ammo. You can notice it by a red ammo icon on its platoon icon or by selecting the platoon and inspecting its state in the platoon status panel. 
One of the most straightforward ways to resupply a unit is to retreat the platoon off map and call it back in after the delay. It will arrive fully restocked with ammo and all its units restored, though the whole maneuver takes a significant amount of time. A similar approach is to move the platoon back to the starting zone. There it will be resupplied too, but the lost units won't be restored. Both of these options use the global supply points pool directly. Their counter is highlighted. Supply platoons allow much more expedient field resupply operations when called on the map. They will load a certain amount of global supply points to their internal storage. Then, if left stationary for some time, these platoons will display a circular supply radius. And all idle units in this radius will be rearmed and repaired, as long as the supply platoon has supply points remaining. You can always see the remaining amount on the counter below the platoon icon. Now use the supply platoon to rearm the MLR MLRS platoon. So you want me to move this to this. Okay. Personally, I thought it would be the other way around, but hey-ho. So yeah, these trucks, again, look pretty decent. Decent bit of animation on the uh, tyres and wheels and suspension. And these MLRS units look equally excellent. You can see the driver in there. It's even got a dirty windscreen. That's so cool. Right, so they've been stationary for a minute. Let's make sure they're in the circle. Main ammo is still zero. There we go. Just have to wait. Supply platoons can significantly extend the time combat platoons remain effective on the battlefield. They're completely unarmed and very vulnerable to any damage, so keep them away from combat. Now to the final exercise. A strong combined arms force is assembled for an attack against an entrenched enemy. An M577 command platoon is attached to the force. It's vulnerable and unarmed, but it provides better coordination for all units in its command radius, improving their accuracy, defense and suppression resistance. You'll be attacking a sizable enemy force in entrenched positions. Expect casualties. Use artillery to suppress the most dangerous targets. Pull the damaged platoons out of combat to resupply. Use retreat Q if a platoon ends up in a critical situation and call it back later. Coordinating a lot of units can be difficult. Use space to pause and issue orders. You can also use control 1, 2, 3, ball to assign currently selected platoons to a control group. Pressing the control numbers button again will select that group. Okay. Clear and occupy the designated area. Be prepared to repulse any counter attacks. I did them. So we're coming in from here. Oh I don't I haven't deployed any units yet. Okay, that's interesting. So what have we got? Zooks. Zooks. Le leopards. Definitely have some leopards in here. What to think about a route, a, the best route. That road looks perilous, but it could potentially provide security. Right, so we've got some leopards.
artillery. Supply trucks. And some Lars. How much have I got left? A little bit. Looks like I have quite a bit of weaponry left. Okay, well, Unit 1, I want you to head over here. They're heading off already, right, I'm going to pause that. I want to kind of orchestrate this as best I can. So unit two, I want you to go here, here, because there's a bit of cover here, which could be useful. Okay. We'll see where we hit enemy or where we get enemy contact first, I guess. Oh, so good. Roger, will do. So, so far, we have zero enemy presence, which is interesting. Interesting. I was expecting a bit of contact at this point. I see some explosives here, though. Well, that's where we were training just now, so... Contact. So I want the last we'll go now. to rain this fire down on these guys over here. So we're taking some hits from here as well.
So it looks like we lost a lot of units there. I got distracted. My daughter came in to say hello. Taken a lot. well entrenched but we're hitting them with a lot of firepower they say pushing out but they're not actually moving at all The Lars are nearly out of ammo. Where's the resupply trucks? Why didn't they come up? It's really annoying. Move up, move up, move up. See these last fire off. It's not going to be a simple wham bam, thank you, man, kind of situation, is it? All righty, well, that did not go well. I don't know why the supply trucks don't move when I... See, look, when you drag and select them, these never get selected. I don't quite know why that is. Right, so we can get some more leopards in? No. Can we get any anything else? Right, so we've got to try and figure out now. Oh, this is the counter attack. 
sneaky. So the looks are not a fighting force. So they're ineffective. Let's just power power ourselves over here. So they've got loads of ammo now. That's good. Okay, let's send those guys back to the base. Bit of a mess. People keep coming in and distracting me, which isn't helping. Uh, but I think, possibly, taking control of that unit. Ah, great work. The position is occupied and all attacks have been repulsed. This concludes the training exercise. Refer to Regipedia to learn about more specialised unit types. Okay, that was not impressive or exceptional uh, skills on my part, but, you know, this is me doing the tutorials, so uh, it's as simple as that, really, isn't it? Mission Fundamentals. So this is the final part. Uh, I'm going to have to go make some dinner, and then uh, I'll come back and finish this off in a little bit. But you won't notice the transition, I hope. Hey okay, guys, I am back after dinner. I'm absolutely exhausted, but I'm kind of ready to go. Receiving operational order. Retreat your damaged platoons. Repairs are free and surviving platoons will accumulate experience. Good advice. New objective received. Welcome to the mission tutorial. Here you will learn the fundamentals of strategy strategic controls. Some missions will start with the pre-battle deployment mode. During the deployment, you have an opportunity to place your pa platoons, patrons, I was going to say, engineering obstacles and static combat positions. The area that allows deployment is highlighted. You can't place any elements outside of it. Placing platoons is done in the same way as calling them in on the map. Select the platoon icon on the panel and designate the point where you want it placed. In case you want the platoon sent back into reserve, use the retreat command. Now place a Marder platoon at the designated point. Marder A2. An infantry fighting vehicle carries an infantry squad into combat and supports it with long-range anti-tank missiles and rapid-fire autocannon. Okay, so... Has thermal night vision, that's pretty cool. 2200 meter vision total. That's pretty good, actually. Um, four machine gunners, 16 riflemen, four anti tank, medium anti tank, and two air defense units. Interesting. Okay. So it says it defends the um, infantry squad. So I'm wondering, can you separate the infantry squad from the vehicle? We haven't done that yet. Maybe that's what we're about to do. Let's drop one in and find out. The engineering panel allows you to place obstacles and static positions. It is visible when no platoons are selected. Both obstacles and positions require engineering points to be deployed. The counter on top of the panel displays the amount of points left. Sites have different prices which are listed on their icons. To place a site, click on one of the icons and use the left mouse button to place it inside the deployment area. Then click once more to define facing. Place obstacles by defining the start and end points of the obstacle line. While you're in placement mode, you can hover the mouse over a planned site or obstacle if it's valid for removal. Cross will be displayed over its icon. Press left mouse button to remove it and refund the engineering points. Use right mouse button to end the placement. Right, so place two strong points and a mortar position at the designated points. So we want mortars here. So that's a strong point. 
just poking out the trees, I guess, is where we want it. Okay. Second strong point. I'm not quite sure where we want that facing. Covering the first strong point, I guess. There's the mortars. Finally, you may click on the confirm button to proceed to the actual mission. Let's take a deeper look at the deployment points. DPs are the main currency that are used to order platoons. You can see the key values in the highlighted portion of the panel. Those numbers are your current DPs and the loss compensation pool DPs. Wow. Okay, that did not go well. While the deployed platoon is alive, you can't order another instance of it. Let's observe what happens if your platoon is destroyed. Ah, there's one guy left. The platoon will become available for deployment once again after a delay. The points you invested in the platoon were moved to the lost compensation DP pool. They will stay there for some time and then will slowly be returned into the main usable DP pool. Despite that, the losses aren't without consequences. You lose all the experience the unit has accumulated, and veteran units are noticeably better than green recruits. You also lose time and opportunities whilst the DP points are locked in the loss compensation pool. Now let's move the, let's move the two task forces. Some typos, perhaps. The regimental panel shows all available platoons by default. It contains only the main body, which represents the bulk of your regiment composition. For the purpose of the tutorial, it has just four platoons total, but actual main bodies consist of eight to twelve platoons. During the game, attached task, task forces become available as the fighting escalates. Task forces provide access to more platoons and additional tactical support options, they often contain specialised and veteran units. You have one task force available now. Go to the task force selection screen by clicking on the blinking red <laughs> by clicking on the blinking cross. On this screen, you can see a list of available task forces with the platoons and tactical aid options listed for each. For the purpose of the tutorial, you have only three task forces to choose from. Select one now and confirm your choice by clicking on the call in button. Oh, we've got a helicopter in this one. I'm rather tempted to go with a helicopter just because it's a helicopter. No tanks, though, is the only problem. Attack helicopter possesses exceptional mobility and firepower. Be wary of enemy anti air weapons. Let's go for that. A tactical aid option has become available to you. Tactical aids represent various off-mat, higher echelon assets, aviation, artillery, battalions, intelligence collecting systems, command and control resources of parent formations. They can deliver powerful strikes against the enemy or grant temporary bonuses to your units. Tactical aids use a different resource than platoons. Tactical aid points, or TPs, are slowly accumulated over time, and are also granted for destroying enemy units. In addition to the TP cost, the TAC aids have a cooldown period. To call in a tactical aid, click on the TAC aid icon in the panel, then click on the map to define the target area. Now use a reconnaissance TAC aid at the designated point to lift the fog of war and check if enemy forces are located there. Use TAC aid here. So, is this TAC aid?
Ah, here. So we've got two lots of napalm and an area recon. Let's do an area recon. New objective received. Okay, the enemy is massing for an attack against allied positions in this sector. Your task is to reinforce them and prevent the enemy force from achieving a breakthrough. Check the new mission objective in the objectives panel, highlighted now. Always refer to the objectives panel to know what your goals are. The second important thing is the timer. In tutorials, there is no time limit, but keep in mind that actual missions are almost universally time limited, and at least one side is always tasked to achieve its objectives before the time runs out. Keep an eye out for the victory points over time. It's important that you have more victory points than your enemy. Annoyingly, my camera is totally blocking that. So I really can't see that very well. Now you are to deploy your platoons and help your allies hold the designated positions. Use reconnaissance platoons and tactical aid to spot the enemy attack early and try to retake lost positions. Units can automatically improve their positions when left idle for 10 seconds. Mechanized infantry can further entrench themselves after 40 seconds in the same position. Use this to reduce your casualties or stay mobile to try and achieve flanking shots against the attackers. So I have to defend that position. Right, well, I can see immediately we've got enemy units coming in here. We've got potential enemy units coming this way. So we've got five tactical exposés. So let's... Uh, I can only do one at a time. I thought I had five. Okay, so this guy is completely pointing the wrong way. Is there any way I can reallocate him? It did sort of say he could, didn't it? So these guys are now exposed heavily because they're all facing the wrong way. They should be facing this way last. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send a regiment of leopards down this way with the intention of sweeping round and then taking the fight this way. Oh, what was that? Is that lightning? So what have we got? Marder, infantry fighting vehicles, carries an infantry squad, artillery. Yeah, I suppose we ought to have some artillery. Uh, armored personnel carrier, attack helicopter, possesses exceptional mobility and firepower. So I think we'll have him come and sit at the back here. And then another... Oh, no, that's the leopard that's out. All right, let's bring this leopard in. Have him sat right in this corner here, because I'm pretty sure we're going to get something coming that way. So take a look at this chopper. Now, will they land after 10 seconds, or do they just hover constantly? So, nothing showing up over here. So I'm suspecting the majority of the attack is going to come from this side. Um, let's have... Artillery can be this guy. This guy can be unit one. This guy can be unit two. Right, 
Right, so what do we have here? So it's a T55AM. Don't know what that is. Don't know what that is. Don't know what that is. We must know what this one is. Looks like tanks or something. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to queue up com some commands. That should be pretty good. Right, so I'm going to put some An artillery attack on I'm hoping these guys aren't moving. Damn it, they are moving. change the plan. I'm going to fire there. I think I moved them by accident. Right. Let's not move. Let's just fire that position. They've been wiped out. These guys are having a terrible time. Oh, wow, they're firing from a hell of a distance. Here. These are tanks, tanks, infantry. Start pounding that area. Okay, so I think I'm going to need to deploy. So we'll have the guys come up here. Oh my god. Okay, they're getting smashed to bits. These guys are out of ammo. And I don't have any... resources to have them back up so I shall well send them back as well we need support right now Solid copy. I can see there that they've. I oh know they haven't separated. I thought they'd separated, but they haven't. So we get the men out. 
7. Enemy air activity detected. Core HQ is authorized the deployment of anti-air systems. Uh, proceed. Roland is a surface air-to-missile system. It provides long-range defense against enemy jets, but is less effective against low-flying helicopters. Keep it well behind the front line, as the SAM systems are extremely vulnerable. Jeopard is an anti-air artillery unit. Its rapid-fire cannons are very effective against helicopters, but don't have the range of the missile system. Hold shift while only a single platoon is selected to visualize the ranges. Okay, so that's the range he has. He has a much greater range. That's fine. Uh, I want to start hitting... So I want to continue hitting these guys, I guess. Alpha jet, two times napalm. Cluster bombs. Okay, let's drop some cluster bombs. Guessing here. Air defense threat low. Okay. Ah, oh, crap. We did a bit of damage to them. Uh, I'm guessing we're going to have to... We are getting smashed to bits right now. Look, they're even firing straight through from there. I don't know. Can I cancel that? Damn. Oh, it's going incredibly well. Do I have anything I can deploy? So I do have some Leo tanks. More mortars. Oh, that's what I've already got. I actually can't tell which units are available and which ones I've already got. So there's a good drop of napalm. We've we've got them panicked. Not quite sure how we got them panicked, but we do. Zone lost. Oh, I see. We have lost the zone.
We're taking a lot of hits. going well. Not going well at all. Zone capture. Taking a lot of damage here. Right, let's drop some napalm here. That's that threat dealt with. We'll go now. Get some artillery on those boys. Deploy those units. We need support right now. Vehicle on. They're blowing up. Reporting multiple tangos. Bug out, boys, bug out. They did not like that, did they? helicopter. Let's have it come in. Looks like the battle has turned. So we're taking a bit of a damage over here. For no good reason.
Oh, I think we killed them already. Some napalm ready. The enemy managed to overwhelm your forces. I don't think so. Ah, oh, so because I let them get in there once, I think we lost that. Okay, well, that was sort of a rough slam dunk introduction to the game. Just remind me some of the keys and some of the components and how things work. There are definitely are some questions there in my head, some elements that uh, I'm not quite following yet, especially why certain units are not available sometimes and sometimes they are. Things that I'm only going to learn by playing. So uh, that was the first look. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I think it, it definitely looks interesting graphically. I think it looks fantastic. Really excited to get my teeth into it and really find out what the game is all about. But they're my thoughts. What are your thoughts on the game from what you've seen in this very short introduction video? Please head over to Sim UK Ultimate Realism if you want to see more gameplay. And uh, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one. Bye for now.